Hello, everyone. I'm very thrilled to have uh, from Divinations and Sonwa, uh, uh, myself, Sonal Sashdeva, and Akshat Pandey from uh, Vedic Akshat on uh, speaking on this holy special uh, called, uh, you know, issues relating with mental health and what are the um, specific karakas and what are the problems and, uh, you know, spe special focus on mental health. And we will be talking, this is a, a sort of an initial introduction and we will be doing many more sessions on mental health only because I think uh, A, um, by and large in the East, not many people want to talk about mental health and um, which is kind of ironic because in Ayurveda, mental health is also forms a big part of the um, Ayurvedic uh, discipline. Um, and in the West, of course, they talk so much that, uh, you know, there's um, uh, sort of right from medications to all kinds of, you know, <clears throat> clinical psychologists and all kinds of um, uh, focus on mental health. Um, but both of them, um, I think uh, there has to be some kind of, you know, um, a holistic way of looking at why the causes of mental health and uh, what is it? Is it, um, you know, is it just somebody is just born with it or is it some something we acquire through our uh, experiences which we imbibe on a subliminal level in childhood? So, um, so we will talk uh, quite a lot about uh, in the next few sessions. But meanwhile, Akshat, uh, over to you. Shall we proceed? Yep. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Because why we chose this topic on mental health on the auspicious occasion of Holi? We need to understand that on Holi, we worship Vishnu as Krishna. And it is by the grace of Krishna, who is the avatar of the moon that represents our mind, we all are same in our life. So moon plays a very important role in determining the person's mental health. And that is why we choose this topic on Holi because we are going to do give you a, some tips of how to do Holi and Krishna Puja also. And that is actually very beneficial for your mental and emotional health. Okay, let's move forward. Um, okay, so the mental health is dependent on the following factors in a horoscope. Of course, the moon, Chandra is, you know, he's a Brahmana Raja. He is an absolutely, you know, he rules the Manas. He is the Karaka for Manas. And uh, the Surya, you know, the sun in the chart will initiate the Raj Yogas and everything, but it is the Chandra, which is absolutely vital in sustenance of any kind of yogas. Um, and absolutely it will, in fact, the Chandra Kendras are the most important uh, Kendras in the horoscope. Um, and so we will talk a little bit about the Shubhapati and uh, few things about uh, the gunas and um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, second. now let's come to the moon actually. Why we are saying at the moon? Because without moon is the one and the foremost thing that represents our manas. It is a yeah. house, yeah. It, is, it rules a natural fourth of the cancer. That is the sound, sign of mother. That is the sound, sign of our happiness. And that is the sound of a security and home. So moon is playing a very vital role. That our moon placed in different rashis and different bhavas or houses of, in horoscope will tell us that how we are behaving in the society and how we are interacting with each other. Okay. So and the kendra of the moon is a whole life, the society, because from moon we are seeing what we are experiencing the world, because moon is also a karaka for Aruna Lagna. The experience that society thinks what we are that is our reflection so moon plays a very very vital role in our thought process okay and one of the best things that we have to see that where is moon placed in a sign is it moon placed in a good house or it is placed in a bad house moon in sixth eighth and twelfth houses is a bad moon because by virtue the sixth eighth and twelfth houses the karaka is saturn and we know that moon and Saturn conjunctions are not good. So people, the first thing that we have to see whether the moon is placed or not, where the moon is placed. If moon is placed in sixth house, 
eighth house and twelfth house, then it is a problem. Then the person has a tendency to become sad. That is one of the problems because moon in sixth, eighth, and twelfth means that you need to maintain that moon. Okay, then we have to check that any planet that is sitting with the moon or aspecting moon will affect our thought process. May it be benefit or malefic because we are we need a mind. The best moon is one who is free from everything. It has to be alone. But the, the moon is aspected by planets. The moon is conjoined with planets. They are going to affect our thought process and our emotions. For example, uh, if a moon is sitting with Venus. Then they say that okay, it's a uh, Annapurna yoga. That person is very good at making food, and then the person's nature is actually very giving and feeding to others. But if Moon and Venus conjunction also forms a Rudra yoga, Rudra yoga means that you are boiling with anger. Venus also has some fire in it. Okay, so that is how we have to see. First, check how is the Moon placed? Is the Moon debilitated? It is in Scorpio. Then that is bad. Is the Moon in Aquarius? And it is bad. So the different signs we have to see that what is the sign and the house is placed, and we can see how the moon is behaving. Okay, we'll come to the conjunction later. I think you should do the gunas, right? Okay. So um, we all know uh, this is from the uh, monumental text of uh, uh, Maharishi Parashara on Tatwa and Guna from BPHS um, chapter three, and. Um, so essentially he's talking about the tatwa and we all know i don't want to go too much into detail because you can join classes or you know uh, find other places um, to go through about which tatwa is associated with which graha but uh, obviously fire and is uh, you know agni is uh, associated with mangal and uh, surya and ketu and Shuk um, uh, shukra is associated with uh, shukra and moon are jalatatva air is shani and uh, rahu and uh, ether or nabha which is uh, the sky the divine element is no doubt uh, brihaspati or jupiter and earth is definitely um, you know mercury so here we are talking also the nature of planets just as people the grahas themselves have a certain nature and this is very fundamental to manifestation what kind of grahas do you have the tamasic graha sitting on your you may be a sagittarius lagna beautiful you know very sattvic sign but you may have like rahu there or you may have like saturn there and low and ma mangal conjunction there so what what is you know those are all ta very strong tamasic grahas so um, you know, that will alter your gunas, no doubt. So the sattvic planets are the luminaries, uh, sun, moon, and of course, Brihaspati, Jupiter. And Venus and Mercury tend to be a very, very rajasic. And signs ruled by them are also predominantly rajas in guna. While Mars and Saturn and um, are tamasic grahas. Of course, the air elements, you know, that this is the... Um, the tamas is where our bulk of our Jyotish work is, because let's face it, if we were in between Sattva and Rajas, um, you know, we wouldn't have the tamas issue and there is no Saturn, Mars or the nodes of the moon um, in our lives. And so literally we would be swinging between Sattva and Rajas, which is um, fantastic, you know, but the fact is that human beings are multifaceted and they are multidimensional. So they have all these gunas. And of yes. course, our ultimate thing is to go beyond the gunas, which is like Vishnu, like a guna, he's the gunatita, you know, which is very relevant because it is about holy and um, it is all about Vishnu and Krishna. Um, the, uh, the moon avatar uh, for um, Vishnu is uh, uh, Lord Krishna. So, so uh, obviously mental health, when we talk of the moon, it is all about the mental health. And okay. when we talk about the moon, we have to take into account the uh, tamas uh, energies or the tamas grahas, which is also the Rashi's um, prima facie. This is the, um, you know, uh, sort of a general one. As you go into much more depth, I think there are other gunas uh, which the Rashi's have, but we won't go for now won't go into that so um uh, mercury and venus rule tamas um sorry are Raj, rajasic um 
signs which is Taurus, Gemini, Virgo and Libra. There are also another classifications which classify the Dvishwa Bhava that is the dual signs as um, uh, you know Satvik, uh, satvik uh, signs or Rashis but like I said we won't go into that prima facie we are just looking at the signs um, or the Rashis which are ruled directly by the uh, concerned uh, Grahas. And uh, Saturn, Mars nodes, of course, we know is now Ketu is an exception here. I put it in pink. Now, pink because Ketu is a graha which is can be very tamasic, but it is also the moksha karaka. So it is excellent for spiritual focus. So yeah. in a way, it is predominantly satvic. But of course, it becomes tamasic when the as human beings, we don't know how to deal with it. You are in Ketu Dasha, and you suddenly want to start earning and or you want to uh, sort of, you know, up your business uh, profits or whatever. But that's not going to happen with Ketu. When Ketu comes, you have to give you when you are given lemons, you have to make lemonade. When Ketu comes, you have to have a very strong focus on spirituality in some way, shape or form. Otherwise, Ketu is going to give you a real beating, real whip, you know, and it is only seven years compared to 18 years of Rahu. And people say, oh, wow, uh, you know, what harm can Ketu, wow, uh, you know, Ketu with only seven years can literally turn your life around so and i have been through the ketu dasha so i speak with experience um so yeah it is um you know but ketu with a, a very good spiritual focus will give you very very good results but coming back aries scorpio of course scorpio has mangal and ketu as its lordships the dual lordships as is aquarius dual lordships and Aries and Capricorn have both, uh, you know, Mangal and uh, Shani as their um, lords, respectively. So moving, so these are, um, as I, as it's evident, these are the tamas um, uh, uh, signs, you know. And of course, the Satvik is uh, Cancer and Pisces and Sagittarius and Leo. Uh, Cancer and Pisces is a very, very, very deeply connected with knowledge and Vedantic knowledge or uh, knowledge coming from the Vedas, especially the Pisces. So these are extremely um, you know, beautiful signs and especially Pisces, as my guru says, Pisces is the best because it has got the best Aditya. It is the Vishnu Aditya. So in a way, Pisces, I do consider as one of the most beautiful signs. Anyway, carrying forward. Now there is another Guna classification given by Parashara in chapter 77, which he talks about the effect of the Gunas. Um, uh, like I said, you can read about this. We don't want to delve too much in depth because we've done so much of this. The Sattva Guna, of course, is if it is predominant and the person is of good character, he's scholarly and so on and so forth. Rajas Guna is about passion and acquiring and you know um even if it is knowledge it's like an acquiring of knowledge you know so that is a very much in the territory of rajas guna and um if that is a predominant in a person and the person um with uh, rajas guna is also very intelligent so and when the tamas guna is um predominant in a person then the person is lazy you know he doesn't want to know much and he doesn't want to change his there's a sort of like a acceptance of a status quo you know let it be you know how bad can it be and it does get bad and it, it, parashara also calls the person stupid you know dumb and murkha so you know but um of course you know uh it is um not an underestimation it is the right estimation because tamas people make a lot of mistakes because of their ignorance so moving forward um when at the time of birth all the grahas are of equal dominance the person has a mixture of all attributes which is uh, evident and the persons uh, or the creatures so born are classified as uttama madhyama which is the intermediate type, Adama, which is despicable. There's a spelling, a sort of, a pardon, a spelling mistake. And Udasina. Now, Udasina is like a sort of a third category. And it is, oh, sorry, a fourth category, which Parashara mentions. But it is also sort of uh, indifferent or neutral, as we will see. 
and so these are the four kinds of uh, pranis or um, animate, uh, uh, you know, animate beings that Parashara is talking about. And he relates their attributes as per described by Rishi Narada. Now here we talk about the Uttama class people. They have the possession of control over the uh, their indriyas, their organs. Of course, it is fantastic because they have control of their mind. It's not the mind that's driving them. It is they who are controlled over their minds. And once you can control, so they are great by and large good meditators, but they have also samatvam. Samatvam is basically the acceptance and also the equanimity in very tough circumstances, no matter what circumstances you are in, no matter what dasha you are in, you know, for them, it doesn't matter, you know, because there's very little that they want from the world. So these class of people are, of course, like the ascended masters and the rishis and all that. So that is, you know, uttama class. But bear in mind, we are never just one thing. Sometimes we may behave uttama and then slide into the other um, gunas uh, and even down to the Udasina and as well as uh, you know Adama. So valor, splendor, patience, cleverness, not retreating in war, protecting the holy men are the natural attributes of the persons belong belonging to the Rajas Guna. So this is also sort of um, uh, you know as we saw here, um, this is also Madhyama Guna. So it has a lot of, lot of flavor of the Rajas Guna and as well as a little bit of the Uttama uh, uh, class people as well. Now uh, we come to the Adhama class, which is obviously to do with a very strong tamas, you know, greed, falsehood, idiocy, laziness, and doing service of others are the inborn attributes of uh, persons belong, belonging to the Adhama class. And then we have a fourth category, which is the engagement in agriculture and business, protection of cattle, Speaking both truth and lies are inborn attributes of persons belonging to the Udasina, Udasina group. So Udasina, like I said, is a bit of a mixed bag, really. And it is, as he says early on, it is neutral, but he gives further classification that sometimes they can be uh, you know, because of the mixture of gunas, they can behave in a certain way. They can behave a little bit like Adama, a little bit about a Madhama, you know, Madhama class. So, or sometimes even, uh, you know, uh, Uttama. So moving forward, we see that he talks about classify the people as Uttama, Madhama, Adama, and Udasina after observation of the attributes. So what is functioning when? And a person should be considered appropriate for a job indeed, according to his attributes. Of course, you know, why would you want to give, um, let's say, uh, somebody who likes to clean and who's lazy a job in sort of like, you know, computer coding or programming, where there is like a lot of thinking and a lot of K2 energy and thinking outside the box is required. So that won't work. If among sattva, rajas, and tamas, any attribute is most dominant, it is considered the most predominant of all. Otherwise, all equal effects, you know? So of course, the lagna, the aspects to the moon will completely color it. And one last thing, great for matching horoscope, uh, 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 Vedic sinistry, um, the affection relationship between an employer and employee and man and woman will invariably um, be stable if they possess the same attributes and in, indeed because they are relating they're talking from the singing from the same hymn sheet so that makes a big difference now the last one and my favorite is um you know among the above four classes of persons if there is any kind of relationship between adama and udasina or uh, Udasina with Madhyama or Madhyama with Uttama, there will be mutual affection and happiness. So here we are seeing that the next to that, the guna next to that, you know, is essentially quite, you know, well adjusted because it is, if it is Madhyama and Uttama, then they can work together. One is very strong Rajas element, uh, Rajas uh, in it. And so Uttama can bring in the equanimity and not the over sense uh, achieving of 
goals and you know constantly on the move and similarly udasina and madhyama udasina can do both they can lie they can you know sort of get things done and they're quite kind of very um you know not particularly that lazy either so they can get on with madhyama and similarly adama with udasina can manage because they have similar um uh you know some uh, subset similar sort of uh sometimes udasina can be a little bit um you know lazy and things like that but this comes into play uh when it is about marriage more than employment i would say in marriage you would always want your man your bridegroom to have better attributes than the bride herself and that is universal you know i would say because only because then you can look up to the person and you want ideally whether it is a man or a woman you want um you know your partner to teach you a lot and you also want to be um you know especially if you are a woman you want um the partner to be brihaspati jupiter to be able to give you the gift of knowledge and you know you show you the way the right way and things like that and from that point of view the uh, bridegroom then needs to have better attributes than the bride and similarly the master and i'm assuming in modern times it is the master means the employer the corporate employer have better attributes than the servant which is the employees and they then will be mutual affection towards each other and happiness and there but if the bride or the servant or which is the employer uh, employee sorry um possesses better attributes that is a better gunas then the relationship will be full of bitterness so that you have to understand because that is going to be very difficult if you hire someone who's a madhyam guna who's like very brilliant go getter who can achieve things and who's also a brilliant a uh, very high on his spiritual uh, thing and you you know and if the employer is um let's say a bit lazy and sort of doesn't want to just wants to tow the line then this whole setup is going to run into problems very quickly okay akshat you want to say something yeah. yeah let's move to the next slide and we'll explain actually how the moon is working mm -hmm. okay now there are things that we have to see that moon when it gets influenced by any other planet it influences our thought process okay the moon is sitting with the benefit like venus that i told you that's uh, venus mercury jupiter then it is not a bad conjunction but but there is some stress on the mind because that planet is actually influencing your thought process for example if moon is sitting with mercury then the person may be very good in studies or he will be very obsessed with studying or reading because that also forms a sharda yoga but that is a very good yoga so we do not take it bad because it is someone is going for achieving of a higher knowledge now again there is if moon is with jupiter then that's a gaj keshri yoga then the person is actually divulging in going upwards in which the jupiter is rising with the moon and when moon is sitting with venus it's a annapurna yoga or it can be a rudra yoga depending that how you're using that energy but when the problem comes is that when moon is sitting with malefics moon should be devoid of any malefic aspect and conjunction because what is happening when this malefics actually conjunction conjoin the moon they are influencing the moon to become like them moon is just like water moon is the one of the planets moon and mercury are the only two planets that can lose their sattva guna mercury can become tamasic lose their rajas guna and moon can lose its sattva guna and become tamas that is why we say that tamas change that is why a mind is always changing moon is always changing its nature from from one paksh to another moon is going into tamas then it's coming into sattva with full of light then it is going to the tamas so what we have to check whether the first thing that we see that what planet has conjoined moon or what planet is aspecting moon if moon conjoins mangal then it's also then it's a rudra yoga rudra means anger mangal is the lord of the earth so that is one of the rudra bhavas then the person may have issues with anger issues and he can have fits of anger then we have to solve that when moon is sitting with how can we solve that we can worship bagla devi so that the negative energy of the mars is controlled and moon comes out 
that is one of the issues that you see the other problem is that when moon is sitting with it can uh, with saturn 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 in a parampara is the sorrow wherever saturn sits in your horoscope that is the sorrow you have to see and the house of that saturn aspect you will have problems from their house what happens when moon is sitting with saturn oh it's a kalika yoga what is kalika yoga we say that you have to worship kali why because whole life you're going to see so much of suffering saturn is telling me telling the person with moon and saturn conjunction that okay you need to suffer through life and you will see your mother will see suffering and you will see great sorrow and depression until unless you remove the energy of saturn what that you become spiritual saturn is making you spiritual because it's giving you a lot of karmic suffering so you have to worship kali moon saturn conjunction is one of the worst conjunctions that i can see what is just like a permanent sad sati on your head But especially that, especially if it is for a man you know i think it will create a lot of problems in relationships you know yeah. saturn yeah, moon, man, moon man, opposites, man. yeah moon conjunction saturn moon um opposite saturn i think also will have the same issue for a man yeah. i think it's uh, particularly not nice yeah why because we saying for the man because by the power inherently the female has a very strong moon because they are giving birth to children a man cannot have a as strong venus and a moon just like a female so for men it is much more worse because they are very prone to anger and depression now then again the other bad yoga is moon with rahu that is a grand yoga rahu is eclipsing your mind you are always overthinking you are always uh, running your mind in things oh what i have to do this do this do this go into deep more deep do it and you are obsessed and you completely lost it you are your mind is not getting proper rest so that is getting giving you an obsession in your mind moon and rahu is then what you need to do you need to worship devi chinnamastaka or durga by that moon is going to come out of the negative effects of rahu then we come moon and ketu conjunction moon and ketu is actually the lunar eclipse ketu has the power to eclipse the moon moon ketu does not have a head ketu is the planet who does not have a head what happens when he sits on your lagna or on your moon it is destroying the moon completely it destroys the moon the person can be absolutely headless he can have multiple shocks in life that can make him behave like a headless person and it is one of the worst then we need to worship dhumavati devi why i am telling you these remedies because when you see someone's chart and you see because everybody's chart moon is affected by one or two malefic nuns moon is free of any malefic aspect everybody has some of the issues and we have to see how much the extent of that issue is manifesting so there are other factors also but first we see what planets are conjoined and affecting the moon okay now let's get to the next slide okay okay now what is tamas chandra actually what is happening moon is not constant in light because moon and sun are is the are dancing around us okay and moon there are 16 tithis and two pakshas okay so what is happening the distance between the sun and the moon is determining which tithi you are born tithi and what happens when moon is getting closer and closer to the sun the moon is started losing light and that means that moon is losing its sattva guna and moon is becoming tamas guna and moon becomes very malefic on three days one is krishna chaturdashi amavasya and shukla pratipad these are the tithis these are very very negative tithis and create a dosha so if you see that if moon is shilna chandrama what we say that if moon you are born after krishna ekadashi to shukla pakshu that the moon is having very little light that means the moon has no sattva guna at all and you are very prone to negative thoughts and negative things so for that you need to make sure that the moon is becoming more strong by doing some ready aspects but the worst is krishna chaturdashi persons who are born on krishna chaturdashi will face the anger of shiva because that is the time when moon is going into complete darkness and amavasya is just like kali it's complete darkness out there and you have to worship kali and shukla pratipat that moon is coming out of that darkness but still has no light then we have to worship vishnu if person has born on these three tithis or if person is born from krishna ekadashi to shukla panchami means the moon is said to be shin shin means damaged you need to do that remedy yeah 
Okay. Um, Shubhapati. Yeah. Now Shubhapati. What is Shubhapati actually? We have to say Shubha means to do something good and Pati means the Lord. The Lord of the moon sign is one of the most important planet in your chart. Okay, because it has given the it has it has given the responsibility to pump your the blood in your body. If moon is the blood, then Shubhapati is pumping. No matter what Shubhapati is there, if moon is sitting in Capricorn, then Saturn is the Shubhapati, and Saturn becomes very important. So what is happening, Shubhapati? What is happening if moon is sitting alone? We say that oh, moon is okay, but the still person is having issues or anger. Then we have to check the Shubhapati. If Shubhapati is conjoined in a malefic yoga or ill placed or damaged, then the person's mind or way of thought process can be damaged. This is much more serious than the conjunction of the moon itself. Because if moon is getting damaged, the Shubhapati that has the power to take that moon out if it's affecting the moon. But if the Shubhapati is getting damaged, then we, there's a very high chance of a permanent damage of the mind and the brain. Okay, Shubhapati, I have seen so many charts when it's where the Shubhapati is under a curse and person has lost his mind. You have, we, they might have some problems like schizophrenia, paranoia. So many different diseases are coming from that. And one of the worst things is that when the Shubhapati is associated with Badha, Moon or Shubhapati associated with Badak, it's one of the sure shot methods that will have some problem, some or other mental problem will be there. Yeah, we. Okay. I think sometime in the future we'll do more on Badak and um, yeah. and as well as um, okay. yeah, and Arud uh, Badak from Arud Lagna and you know how those can be a problem. But anyway, um, moving forward. Badak is one of the worst. Uh, people yeah. who I've seen so many cases in which persons is having autism, so many problems. And we have to see that the moon have moon association with Badak or moon lord is in a curse with Badak and the Lagna is very great. So there's a complete damage of the mind. Yeah. Anyway, complete moving, moving forward. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, you know, Dvishwa Bhava signs have Badak as the seventh house or seventh lord and um for chara rashis which is movable signs have badak uh, lord as well as the badak star as the 11th house and for a uh, fixed signs thira rashis it is the ninth house and the or the ninth lord um uh, which is a problem right akshat so yeah. um moving forward uh lagna or uh, which which is our viveka our intelligence our dhi um yeah so uh, you say saturn and ketu are most problematic yeah, saturn and ketu are most now, problematic. now it also forms a turagadi yoga uh you know which we have learned in germany as well as other um you know it has a very specific you know these people are brilliant with animals or they have a ability to talk to animals but <laughs> it is still going to create some issue, right? Yeah, because what is happening? Why you are talking to animals? Because you are not able to communicate with the humans. You are not able to adjust in the society very well. Yeah. People are yeah. not telling because what is happening? The lagna is just the. It is your seat of intelligence. It is like your brain. It is like your CPU. And what type of hardware you are having? If a malefic planet is sitting over there, then it is going to give you negative things. Yeah. Saturn. Yeah. Is Marana Karaka in Lagna. So what is happening? Saturn is telling, oh, you have said in me, you want me to take care of your health and intelligence. Oh, I feel like dying over here. Okay, I can't do the job. Then the person is having a bad health or is always disassociated because he thinks I'm wherever I go, I see sorrow. That is one of the problems with this. And what happens with Ketu? What happened? Ketu is Ketu does not have a head. So if it's sitting in your Lagna, whole life you are trying to to find your identity because you are so rash in your things that you're not able to think. You're only using your intuition and going away. You're not using your mind at all. K2 is like Shunya. K2 is a very benefit planet for someone who is into spirituality, into sannyasa. But that is a different league. Not everybody is going to take sannyasa and go into spiritual life. But most of us are going to remain in sansara, in a material life. For that, K2 is playing Bravo. K2 yeah. says that, okay, I'll do zero everything. I'll make you bring zero. I'll make you intelligence zero. That is one of the problems. K2 is that it becomes, becomes you headless. Mars in the Lakna, we can say, see, Mars is not a bad planet in the Lakna, but it's a melody. Why we say that Mars is not bad? Because if you see the natural zodiac, the first house is ruled by Mars. 
the first house is ruled by Mars. So when Mars is sitting in Lagna, we can say that the person have some has some anger issues or he might have head injury. But I don't like any of these plants in the Lagna. Rahu, okay. Rahu okay. in the Lagna, Rahu in the Lagna is a person. He it makes a person very intelligent at times. But again, it is giving the obsession that person can be obsessed with so many things because Rahu wants to do a lot of boba. He wants to try everything. He is having 10 heads. So you are, you, are, you are actually, your hands are full of multiple things. You're not able to concentrate on one thing. That is one of the problems with Rahu. So, so we don't want these plants in Lagna. So one of the best plants to sit in Lagna is Jupiter or Jupiter is in Digbala, Mercury is in Digbala. That is giving yeah. you higher knowledge, complete knowledge. Ishana is there. Sun in Lagna is also very good because sun is a significator of the Lagna. These are the plants that otherwise all Melfi plants are problematic in Lagna. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if you have sun along with some uh, uh, malefic influences, then, uh, you know, it's very difficult to come out of uh, an afflicted sun. Tough. Okay, so the last one, and then we are done. Uh, Lagnesh yeah. and Papa Lagna. Yeah, now uh, Lagnesha, the Lagna Lord. See, what is the importance of Lagna Lord? See, Lagna is your head, it's your machinery. But what data is going to input and how is going to process is the Lord of the Lagna, Lagnesha. Okay, so Lagnesha is like our operating system that what information we are getting it and inputting a Lagnesha. If Lagnesha is said, if Lagnesha is in a problem, then again the Lagna will also become weak. Because that is why we see that for moon, we saw the Shukpati, that is Lord of the Moon sign. And for Lagna, we are seeing the Lord of the Lagna. Why? Because it is his house. If he is damaged, he cannot maintain his house only. That is one of the things. The problem is if Lagnesha is in Malefic, if Lagnesha is becomes debilitated, okay, if Lagnesha is under a curse, then the person will have some health issues. If seriously, health issues will be there. Serious damage to his child because, uh, I guess, one thing has to be noted. If malefics are in the lagna and lagnesha is in a very badly hit place, then childhood is ruined. And from that childhood trauma, there might be some mental issues because lagna is your childhood also. Yeah. So we see that lagnesha should be strongly and well placed. And everybody should always make their shukpati and lagnesh strong. That is one of the remedies to make sure that your memory, your mind stays happy. Yeah. Not the, rashi, the Rashi mantra of the moon yeah. is, uh, is one Simple of the best. Mantra yeah. And yeah. as yeah. well as the uh, mantra for the, um, you know, the Lagna Lord um, yeah. is one of the best. So yes. um, Paka means ripening. So we went through that. If malefic yogas or planets affect the Paka Lagna, serious mental diseases can This be is actually one of the most problem because if Paka Lagna is it, you are not able to process or intake any information at all. Yeah. You yeah. take any cases of children who are suffering from autism and you will see that there is some other affliction to Paka Lagna will be there. Yeah. Because your Paka is, means that your mind is not maturing enough. Is not able to mature. It is not you're not able to mature or write that knowledge to make your use. So yeah. paka lagna is very very important. A person's head is in the lagna, but he is working through his paka lagna. So yeah. All Aries yeah. ascendant persons are not not the same. It's there's so you can take five Aries pers ascendant person, and everybody will have a different paka lagna. Everybody's thought process will be different. There will be some so many things will be different. Twins are born with the same lagna. Same chart, but their thought process so different because their Paka Lagna is different, working in a different way. So if you see that Paka Lagna is the sign in which your Lagna Lord is sitting, if you see there are malefic yogas to present, or the Pakesha is very hit, or a Paka Lagna is actually in the Badak sign, or oh, oh, it's a serious problem. Suppose your Lagna Lord is Saturn and it is sitting in Scorpio. Capricorn Lagna and the Badak is Scorpio sitting in Scorpio, and we have Mangal also also over there. Yeah. I mean, I, I, from my files, I also have like Leo Lagna, exalted Lagna Lord in the ninth house, you know, and, um, but that it's in the Badakstana, you know, um, that can create problems. And I that do know people. That will create a problem. That yeah. will create a problem. Exalted means that you are very high in ideal, but it does not guarantee you that your, your mind is right or not. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Then that we have to look at the moon. So, you know. Okay. Moon, everything you have to see because see these these are the just general stuff that you can identify 
the causes of the problem on the physical level then they are, are advancing that is so they are melphic yoga is like unmad yoga that is a yoga of madness and then yeah. we can see that what of there are pap kartri yogas then there is something called on the nakshatra level this navtara chakra and manas nakshatra that is giving your mental ability then there is nakshatra amsha that is due to some what is your mental strength and weaknesses then we see how the upagraha and apakash grahas are placed in your chart and karakamsha and diseases in the navamsha so it's a it's a very very huge study what we have given you it's a birds eye view on the basic things that a, a beginner can look in the rashi chart yeah absolutely in the new astrology and he comes over there and he can look into the rashi chart and say oh my god this is a problem what we should do if anybody is having any sort of mental problems i will recommend simply give them the krishna mantra yeah if you don't know anything om namo te vasudevaya that is the one of the best mantras that a person can give to someone yeah yeah do adakshri to person who is having any issues of mental issues okay, okay. so we have to end now akshat happy holi and uh, happy holi everybody yeah and um, speak soon okay lovely <laughs> Bye bye Axel. Bye. Bye.